Let me preface this by telling you that in about 2016, as the revival to Gilmore Girls came out, somebody spoiled the ending for me. That was what, five years ago by now? I still haven't spoken to them. <laughs> Welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am going to take the spoiler book tag. This was created by Gunpowder Fiction and Plot and I've seen this floating around on the internet a couple of times. I know Olivia from Olivia Catastrophes has done it and I know that Emma from Drinking By My Shelf has done this. I have very strong opinions about spoilers. What is a spoiler? When should you spoiler? Who should you spoiler? Let's dive in. Question one is what do you consider a spoiler? And that can kind of vary. I think a spoiler is something that's not explicitly mentioned on the blurb of the book or something that happens in the final 50 or so percent. Something that you really have to get into the meat and bones of the book to understand or to figure out or to find out what's happening. I definitely think that there are certain aspects of the plot that can be a spoiler, for example, in a thriller, the murderer is a definite spoiler. There are certain things that I think you should absolutely not give away to somebody who is reading a book that you are seeing them read. Maybe they're reading it for the first time, but it's a favorite of yours. And I always think that you should always preface your question with, have you read this before? How far into it are you? What do you want to know about this book? All that kind of questioning is very important. Question two, does the genre you're reading impact what you believe is a spoiler? Yes, 125%. I don't even think you can do 125%. For romance, generally, you know that the couple is going to get together. I think that a lot of the journey as to how they're going to get there can be spoilered. But the happy ever after isn't generally a spoiler for me because I know to expect that the couple is going to get together by the end of the book. It might be a spoiler in terms of there's a love triangle in this book and you don't know who they're going to end up with. But in the main part, you know that there's going to be a couple by the end of this book. You might not know who the couple is going to be comprised of or you might not know how they got to get together, but you know that something's going to happen. I don't mention it a lot here, but I also read quite a lot of thrillers and I think that the murderer is... Definitely a spoiler. There is absolutely no way that you can go into a thriller book reading it and say, it was the grandmother that did that. To somebody who's reading the book for the first time, honestly, I think they throw you out a 10th floor window. I'd do it. Oh, I have to hold my tablet for this one because this, this is quite the long question. Question three, all the best bits are in the trailer. Sometimes the synopsis can be too detailed. Do you research books prior to reading them or do you prefer to know nothing about the book? I'm kind of a 50-50 girl. I like going into a book knowing nothing about it, not knowing what the plot's about, not knowing uh, anything about the main characters, where it's set. I like going into it completely blind and just being surprised, being taken on a journey and discovering what's going to happen in the book. But at the same time, I also like knowing a little bit about it. Sometimes I will read the blurb, but not heavily read it, more so cast an eye over it. So I'm kind of a 50-50. I'm on the fence with that one. Let's say it like that. Question four, sometimes the introduction or translator notes can spoil the ending, especially for classics. Has this happened to you? I don't think so. I don't read a lot of classics, so that hasn't happened for me. Although I have had classics spoiled. But then again, you have the question of can you spoiler a book that's over 200 years old? For example, I've never picked up Pride and Prejudice before, but I know the basics of what happens to it, mainly because it's been so long in the public mouth that everybody is talking about it, but also because I've watched a video called John Mulaney Explains Pride and Prejudice to You, where it's basically just John Mulaney quotes from his stand-up shows that fit into the plot points of Pride and Prejudice. It doesn't put me off wanting to read it, it's just something that's now going to be in my head for the entire time that I'm going to read the book. Question five, name a time that somebody spoiled a book for you. I don't think somebody has spoiled a book, but I have said already that somebody spoiled the ending to A Year in the Life, the Gilmore Girls revival. And I, I was genuinely so pissed off about it because I hadn't actually watched Gilmore Girls the whole way through when the revival came out. I think I was on like midway through season five, maybe the start of season six. And I wanted to keep the revival until I was completely finished. I didn't want to see any... Um, internet spoilers, I tried to keep myself off Twitter as much as I could on the days the arrival came out so that I would avoid them as much as possible. And then I remember I was just sitting in bed 
in the evening I may have just been reading or something and my phone went off and somebody had messaged me what had happened at the end of it and had a question about it and I was like please ask if they've seen it next time question six have you ever spoiled a novel for somebody else I haven't spoiled a novel but I have spoiled a tv show Tomman is one of those anomaly people who's never seen friends the whole way through so we decided to watch Friends the whole way through a couple of months ago and right now we're still in the middle of about season six, I think. But I made a slightly throwaway comment about Chandler and Monica and he just stared me down and said, I had no idea they got married. I think my face just fell because we have this kind of agreement between the two of us that if somebody spoilers something for the other intentionally or otherwise you have to watch one of the really shitty films that they know so because i spoilered um friends i will have to watch robocop at some stage of my life and if he ever spoilers something for me he's gonna have to watch high school musical which he will absolutely despise but you cannot picture the amount of petty enjoyment i'm gonna get out of it Question number seven, if spoilers ruin novels, are there some genres or authors that you can't reread? I think I'm gonna have to say thrillers here for the main reason that if I already know who the murderer was, if I already know what the outcome of the, co of the court trial was, if I already know what happened in this instance, I'm probably not going to go back over it and try and fine tooth comb it and say, oh, this is a hint that this is foreshadowing this happens later on, the, oh, I get it, all of the jigsaw pieces coming together. I'm probably not going to go back over the book and see what did I miss the first time. I like going into it not knowing what happens in the book and not knowing who's responsible for this or where this is going to bring me to. I think if I reread a thriller, it's going to take a little bit of that enjoyment out of it for me. Question number eight, when reviewing, are you spoiler free and does this limit your ability to discuss the book? I always try to be spoiler free. I don't know if I'm always perfectly spoiler free. There might have been a couple of videos where they've kind of found their way into it or if I've written a blog post or a review and there might be a couple of spoilers that have worked their way in. But it's not something that I'm intentionally doing and I will always try to keep as vague as possible as to what's happening in the book. I'll generally try to stick to what is mentioned on the blurb or something that's happened in the first 30 or so pages because I know that that's quite a popular place where people who are going to DNF a book will just throw it to one side. It doesn't really affect how I talk about books but it does make me a little bit conscious of what I'm about to say. You might see me in a couple of you saying this really big thing happens by the end of the book and it's something that you need to be prepared for. But other than that, I will always try and keep my reviews as spoiler free as I possibly can. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on spoiling books. Do you agree with spoilers? Do you seek them out for yourself? Or are you an absolutely spoiler free zone? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have my videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.